Skellefteå may seem like a sleepy backwater, lying in the far north of Sweden, just below the Arctic Circle. It's surrounded by miles of spruce forest, and just a few planes arrive here each day. But the city, which is fully powered by renewable energy, is a hotbed of green development, offering a glimpse into a more climate-conscious future. High-end wooden architecture dots Skellefteå's streets and buildings, as well as its car parks, bridges, and even its air traffic control tower. It's here at the airport you can spot another eco-credential, the infrastructure for electric flights. We have so many things in place here that we can used to speed up the way to commercial electrified air transportation. And that is, of course, the cold weather. You need to test everything in really cold and harsh conditions. And then we have a lot of green electricity, mostly from hydropower. In northern Sweden, it's more than 100 billion euros invested in clean tech. So it's a lot of people moving in. The ground transportation network isn't built for that. So we can see that this can be a part of the puzzle to really connect uh, smaller cities and, and regions in, in northern Sweden. The airport's infrastructure is one of the reasons that the nearby Green Flight Academy made Skellefteå its base, as the first professional flight school to offer training with electric aircraft. The academy is being steered by CEO Olof Holtin. If you're going to have economy in, this, in the electric airplanes, you need to have them up in the air as much, much as possible, of course. And uh, this amount of power which Skellefteå Airport have, has in West Berlin made it, may, makes it possible. The school has three shiny new Pipistrel Velis Electros, the first electric plane to be approved for use in Europe. The tiny two-seater weighs 400 kilograms, can be wheeled out of the hangar by hand, and is designed to be as aerodynamic as possible, with a pared-down cabin that's not built for the big boned. After a week of April snowstorms, Monocle was lucky to visit in a bright and sunny window and take to the sky with the school's head of training, Johan Norberg, and see how it handles. If you transition from driving a, a diesel or a petrol car to an electric car, it's exactly the same thing. You, you have to think in a, in a different way and, and sort of manage your energy. The range is not the same and such, but, but when it just comes to handling, it flies exactly the same as, as any other, other airplane. The major difference, I guess, is the noise. There's only the propeller, of course. There's no engine noise whatsoever, which is quite neat. You know, in the beginning, when you fly it the first time and you, you pull the power back when you're taxiing and the propeller actually stops, then you're like, the immediate instinct is, oh, something's wrong. But then you go like, no, but it's an electric, so it's, it's all fine. It's not supposed to idle like a, like a combustion engine is. From the air, it's possible to see a hulking icon of the region's development, the Northvolt Battery Factory. Built as Europe's largest gigafactory, it's drawing thousands of workers to the region. The factory's construction has driven investment across the area. House prices have nearly doubled and construction is booming. It's, it's a totally different vibe here compared to when I grew up. Then, then it was, you know, there, there was not as many restaurants, not as many hotels, not as much to do, but nowadays it's, it's completely different. It's no coincidence that the Green Flight Academy is one of many projects springing up across the home of Fliegscam, or flight shaming. 56% of Sweden's energy now comes from renewables, as of 2019. A big part for us was, is the ecosystem here in Skellefteå with the local power plants, uh, wind and water, the North Vault and the whole sustainable community which we feel that we are part of. The Academy also has a conventional Piper Archer aircraft to cover some aspects of training that the Pipistrels can't yet meet. That's because the rollout of electric flight is still limited by technology. The Pipistrel's flying range is currently about 45 minutes before it needs recharging. It may be a risk to launch a flight school with these planes, but it's one the school thinks is worth taking, especially now. I think it's really exciting with, with this whole new technology developing. You only get one chance in life to do something like this and be, be part of it. If it works or not, who knows, but, 
but you can only try, do what you can and contribute with my expertise to, to make it happen.